Now, at this point, this is a realistic matchup that is now a fantasy matchup. But this is a fight that should have happened years ago. Notice, Tiafimo Lopez has fought Lomachenko. Devin Haney has fought Lomachenko. Tank, he could have fought Loma, but for whatever reason, the fight didn't happen. <clears throat> I always say that I think that Tank Davis is a great fighter. And I think he just has to fight other great fighters in order to prove that he's great. But I think that if he were to fight Lomachenko, whether it be four years ago or right now, he would lose because it's a bad fight stylistically. They don't match up well. So. Uh, what's up, boss? I'm a, I just got on here, so I'm going to just land this plane so that you talk about. The um, thing that, was, that kind of talked to me is the fact that Tank Davis, although he's shorter than Loma, he has longer arms. We already know he has the, the power edge, he has the power advantage. But Loma, he has more movement. His movement is more erratic. Uh, Loma throws more combinations. And pretty much, unless Tank can knock him out, I think Loma will win on points. A lot of people assume because Devin Haney beat Loma, or because Teal beat Loma, Tank can do it as well. What Teal had going for him is something that Tank has. Teal has power. But Tio has a lot of offensive aggression coming forward. Tank will get aggressive if he has to, but he likes to wait. He likes to throw rounds away. What Haney had that allowed him to beat Loma was his great frame, his height, his length, his size. So Loma had a hard time getting through all of that uh, the first you know, five or six rounds of the fight. But Tank will be the shortest opponent that Loma has faced. He'd be the, the person that's around the same size if they were to fight. Teal was noticed to be larger than Loma. Haney was way larger than Loma. And that's why Loma struggled. Loma really should be fighting at 130. As we all know, Tank started at 130. So this will be a very, very uh, even fight, I believe. I give Loma the edge to win. But I will still give Tank a high chance of knocking him out. Basically, if Tank doesn't knock him out, Loma will win on points because of his activity. Even right now, at um, I think he's 36 years old. At 36 years of age, I would pick Loma to beat um, Tank Davis. Bro, talk about fights that would happen. I mean, I just talk about what yeah. I feel like talking yeah. about. Boxy Dragon, who wins this fight and why? I think it depends on the weight. Um, I think if the fight would have happened at 130, I think Loma would have won by knockout. Because people forget that Loma knockout. was... Yeah, Loma was knocking motherfuckers out at 130. He was swatting Listen, at 130. Tank Davis' chin is too good for him to get knocked out by Lomachenko. I don't know. Right? I just feel like with the, with his like offensive arm slot and just like the volume of punches, like I feel like round eight. You know what I'm saying? We would see. We would start no, to see him stumble. No, listen. I, I don't know though. Listen, know. let me tell I, you it something. Never let me tell you something. Tank Davis took punches from Barrios, a man who was much larger than him. Barrios rocked him. Tank ate it. Um, Tank has gotten hit. By uh, Gamboa. Gamboa hurt Terrence Crawford. Tank took flush shots by Gamboa. He ate those shots. Tank Davis is no chicken dinner. He would not, even if Loma beat him, I don't think Loma would stop. Even at 130. Like, because mind you, Tank Davis was good at 130 as well. It's not like Tank would be drained or something. He's a smaller guy as well. So um, he'd, be, he'd be fine at 130. He'd still be the same Tank with a, with a nice chin. A great chin, great uh, durability, great punch resistance, and great power. So I don't think Loma will stop him, but I do believe that Loma would outpoint him even at this age because of the style. Loma's jumping in and out, looking for all these different angles. Um, the adjustments that Devin Haney made, a lot of it was due to his natural size and frame. Tio, he intimidated Loma with his power and with his aggression and with his combinations. Tank doesn't necessarily throw combinations that often, and he's not as big as Tio. And he's damn sure not as big as um, Haney. So I think this would be a much closer fight. And I'll give Loma the edge by uh, uh, an inch, really. I'll give Loma the edge by a round or two to beat Tank Davis. Someone said Tank Duck Loma for years. Yes, I do believe Tank Duck Loma, but it worked out for Tank because that's a fight that he could have lost. Now, would I don't want to fight Loma? Yes. And I think that Tank could knock Loma out. I think he would have lost, though, because Loma was so experienced. Tank seems to still be unsure of himself. He seems much more sure of himself now, especially when you watch him fight. Uh, when he, the Ryan Garcia fight, he was talking shit. 
uh, the Rolly Romero fight, he was talking shit in the midst of fighting. So this man is, is extremely confident. Tank Davis could take his eyes off his opponent and then lock right back in. So he's he's in that zone right now. But a few years ago, I don't think he was necessarily in that zone. I don't think he was as confident as he needed to be to fight Loma. Right now, I think you would have confidence, but I think with uh, the in and out style, the same style that Usyk used, that Eastern European, all that extra ex excess movement would give Tank a lot of problems. In the fact that Tank is smaller than Loma, although he has a longer reach, which is um kind of weird. King Boogie, what's up, man? Is your mic all right? Mic check one. Hey, guy, can you hear me? I can hear you, man. Uh, who wins this fight between Lomachenko and Tank Davis? Oh, man, that's me. You know, <clears throat> Tank got a chin, but I don't think he got the chin for Lomachenko. Because, you know, Lomachenko be coming in from, from nowhere. Listen, <laughs> Lomachenko has good power, but if Lomachenko had special power, he would have stopped T.O. and Haney. Loma struggled with that lightweight because he's really not, he's really small for lightweight. But Tank Davis, yeah. he's been, um, Tank Davis, he's been knocking guys out even when he went up and when he went to 140, he knocked Barrios out. You know, the, so so here's my thing too, right? One thing that, you know, I'm, I'm out here in Vegas, you know, in uh, Mayweather Capital, so, you know, I get to go watch him work out and stuff. The thing about Tank right. is that when you fight Tank, you can't fight Tank's fight. You know what I'm saying? Because you fight his fight, he doesn't know nothing but uh, but go toe to toe with people. And if you go toe to toe with Tank, it's not gonna be pretty. Didn't uh, Loma um, get dropped by Linares? Listen, Tank. Loma, you said Loma got dropped by Linares. I don't know. I don't I'm pretty know. sure he got dropped by Linares. I don't, I don't know. know. Let me look that up because I don't. I, I don't know either. But Tank's listen. Tank's footwork. Uh, negates him from being a total -to toe fighter. Tank is not a total -to toe fighter. He's a all around boxer that has power in both hands yes. and that can fight on the inside and outside. He can fight on the inside if he chooses to, but he's not a total -to toe fighter. He's he's really very special. He's very very special, underrated. The yeah. only thing about Tank is that he needs a better resume. Like he needs to fight better competition. He fights the competition. He beats him. Like he beats Haney and Tio. He's pretty much gonna be pound for pound number one in the world. Cause Bud, at the end of the day, uh, Bud Bud only got probably three or four more fights. Tank probably has ten more fights. So he gonna end up being pound for pound in the world if he could beat you know the Devin Haney's and the Teals of the world, especially when when you consider how marketable he is and how how well he's done pay per view wise. So let me ask you a question on that. Do you who do you think really won? Do you think Pitbull beat? Tank? No, no, it wasn't uh, even uh, Pitbull made uh, it competitive. Um, he hurt Tank to the body. I've never seen anyone do yeah. that. And it was mainly because Pitbull was smaller than Tank. Tank is used to being a smaller guy. So it was like a role reversal. So Tank, he had to adjust. He had to box. He couldn't be, you know, the short guy that's getting under the punches. Now it was a guy that was shorter than him getting under his punches. But ultimately, Pitbull, he was getting out boxed because Pitbull boxed in a straight line. So anybody that could move in, in laterally, Take a punch, give a punch, work a jab. They're gonna beat Pitbull. Pitbull. Anybody that has footwork in the chin will beat Pitbull. Man, Pitbull, Pitbull could have won if he made fucking adjustments instead of just chasing him around in a straight goddamn yeah. line. Like I don't understand. You would have to fight like Roberto like, Duran. I don't understand what if, if it Pitbull is with like, like, uh, uh, like, like Mexicans. Like I'm, I'm a Mexican dude, so you know what I'm saying. So I'm, you know, I can say this. I don't know what it is with us Mexicans, bro. We refuse to fucking move laterally, bro. Like, yes. How many Mugia tries it? Like, How many Mugia tries it? That, it's like between that and moving our head off the line, like the shit just goes over our fucking heads. Like, I don't I don't know, bro. Like, we could swat. Well, Canelo. Canelo has worked on, on moving his head off the line. But like. So there's some Mexicans that, that try to make the adjustments and some that don't. Pitbull, Pitbull was, uh, Pitbull, I thought in that fight, he was excellent and neutralizing uh tanks left because like he, he just every time he threw an uppercut he just kept he kept like you know he kept dodging it and he just kept bobbing and weaving straight forward like he was moving straight forward at him and just tank couldn't land anything substantial well check um, this out but he just, check this out which which hand did tank hurt i think he hurt his lead his uh power hand left hand 
Okay, so so that's why I said that because if he hurt his left and you're saying Pitbull neutralized his left, we don't really know if Pitbull neutralized or if the hand was already neutralized. So that's something that we're going to have to wait for the rematch. And I do believe there will be a rematch at 140. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely think so. Think so. Too. I don't know. In my opinion, if you if you break if you break your hand on my arm with me purposely defending it, in my opinion, you neutralized it. You feel me? That's a good like, yeah, that's a good point because when you're like, boxing, even myself, um, if I block someone's punch and they they hit right on the elbow, they could hurt their hand just doing that. So that's a great point. Maybe you're saying Pitbull's defense, the way that he was keeping his hands up, uh, keeping his structure. Tank hit that guard. He hit that elbow somewhere, and that might have hurt his hand. He kept, he kept hitting that forearm elbow area literally every single time. Yeah, that so, elbow. hey, good but point, Pitbull man. Failed to like, ultimately, Pitbull had the perfect opportunity to, to beat Tank Davis, and he didn't do it. So I don't think a fully healthy, more knowledgeable Tank Davis who's already downloaded a full fight's worth of info on Cruz, I don't think Great that fight point. is going to near, go nearly as well as the first one. The first one, he had his chance and he fumbled. Hey, if y'all in the chat, make sure y'all are tapping the screen and liking the live, man. I think Tank is going to stop him if they fight again because, like you said, Tank, a King Boogie, thanks for the follow, but Tank downloads that data, and he already has a fight, a full fight of experience with Pitbull Cruz. And if his left hand doesn't start hurting, I mean, Lord knows. he. There were times uh, before the hand was hurt where he was starting to up the tempo and hit Cruz with some hard shots. There's some still shots yeah, of Cruz looking like this and shit, you know, getting hit in the chin. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's, it's yeah, no, I know. I know. Like the day where Cruz here yeah, guys like ass rock. Yeah. Trey, thanks for the follow. Everybody, if you're in here, make sure you tap on the screen, like in the live. And the issue, like, uh, Pitbull, we got another like, I've seen all Pitbull fights since, you know, since uh, Fighting mm -hmm. Tank, and he just, he hasn't changed at all. Like he, uh, like, don't get me wrong. He looks good at what he does. It's just what he does ain't enough. You feel me? Listen, Pitbull fights in one direction. So whenever you fight in one direction, and you have one style, you're gonna lose eventually. In order to be a dominant fighter, you have to have multiple styles. You have to fight in multiple directions. Why are you turning light off? Hello. Hey, James Alfred, thanks for the follow. Hey, Famous Boxing, what's up? What's a good? Um, who wins this, this fantasy matchup that should have been a real matchup between Lomachenko and Tank Davis, and why? I got Tank because, you know, when you fight Tank, it only takes one shot, and then you're done. And as we've seen, Lomachenko has high-level IQ fights. And we know Tank's a high-level IQ fighter, so... And... Lomachenko in those high level IQ fights, like when he fought Lo uh, when he fought Devin and uh, Tito, he got hit enough in those fights to make me convince me that Tank can can just uh, get him and get him out of there. You know, Devin and Tito throw more punches than Tank. That's true, but it only takes one for Tank, and you already know how much. This, this is where you have a great point. This is where you have a great point. The only man that was never knocked down or knocked out by Tank was Pitbull Cruz. So maybe Tank could knock out Loma. I think that would be a 60-40 fight in our favor of Loma, but Tank does have a chance to sleep that man. Especially if they were to fight now, like when oh, yeah. Loma is 35-36. Um, Loma only has 20 professional fights, but he has a lot of wear and tear from the amateurs, has 400 amateur fights. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how his body is going to take those punches at this age. If they would have fought in their prime... Uh, I'm certain I would have to go with Loma. Loma would have been able to take the punch, especially if it was at 130. Um, Loma was too small for lightweight, but Tank, he's special, so his power has been the same at 30, 35, and 40. Loma, not so much. But at 130, Loma's in his prime, and Tank is still young minded. Uh, I got Loma winning that. But right now, because of the point that you made, you got to look at the, the history of it. And I got to look at the percentages, the knockout, damn near everyone whose name wasn't Pitbull Cruz. So now I think 10 Loma will get knocked out, man. But if Loma doesn't get knocked out, I don't see how Tank could win on the scorecards. I mean, Loma throws a bunch of punches. Loma has great defense. Loma has very good footwork, even at this age. 
And um, the way that uh, Tank is Tank is his, uh, five foot nine with 71 inch reach like that, yeah. so he's not going to be able to just lean back away from a lot of Loma shots. Right. So he's going to be there to get hit. And plus, when Tank starts losing, he puts his guard up and he allows himself to get hit in order to land a big shot. So if that big shot never lands and Loma just continues to land five and six months combinations, I think he would be able to outpoint him. Yeah, I do agree with you on that point. Like if uh, Loma comes in there, just 10 out of 10, just amazing footwork, footwork, amazing head movement, just doesn't get hit, then it'd be a tough night for Tank to find that one shot. I mean, Loma going to get hit. All of these guys hit each other for the most part when they fight. Rarely do you see a Perno Whitaker performance uh, where a guy barely touches some, or Devin Haney reaches pro grade performance where a guy barely gets touched. That's rare in boxing. But, um, yeah, or like so, a flush. Uh, Loma Younger would have gave him a great fight, but not now. Even right now, Loma would give Tank a great fight. Yeah. Man, huh, believe it or not, right now, Loma would give Tank a great, great fight, even right now, because Loma has a bunch of experience. Uh, he doesn't have no fear, none of these guys. Uh, and he, he has. Olympic pedigree. I think he's a two-time gold medalist. Mm -hmm. Just the style that he fights in would be at Tank, at Tank's size. Even right now. I'm not saying Loma will win, but he would give Tank a run for his money. But sure. if Loma is prime, I, I think Loma will probably win in his prime at 130. Champ, let me put you on the spot, Champ. What's the other round? What round? What, what round what? What round you think is going to be over? Tank, Loma, Tank and Loma? You know I gotta put uh, you on the spot. Saying that Tank wins. <laughs> um, if Tank were to fight Loma, I think he would need the knockout, and I think he would get the knockout late. A lot of Tank's knockouts against better fighters come late, so I think probably like round ten is round eleven. You saw Loma slow down in the twelfth yeah, round against Yeah, let's slow down. And we, and Tank fought Gamboa. It took him twelve rounds to get Gamboa out of there. Although I do have to mention that Gamboa had tore his Achilles in the second round. Correct. Um, I think Tank would have won that fight anyway because from the start of that fight, um, he was winning. What's going on, man? Yeah. Hey, uh, what's up, MVP? Nothing much, man. I'm going to bounce off from your point. Uh, I haven't seen Loma wobbled before. Have you seen him wobble before? I'm not saying he won't get knocked out. I just, I'm curious to see how he'd look if he were to get wobbled KO'd by a guy like Tank. I you know I feel like his chin is very good though. But yeah, I probably have Tank winning nowadays. Yeah, Loma, he he's not even just his chin, it's the experience. Loma has been taking punches for years. I mean he started training for boxing literally like at like three or four years old. You know, he has over four hundred amateur fights. So he has a good chin but he has so much experience and his body is so used to taking punches. Uh, that probably would allow him to make twelve rounds of Tank, but you never know. Tank has special, special, special power, man. Someone right. says host, you're frozen. It's all good, man. My my internet isn't the best, and we gonna just get through it. <laughs> so who do you think Tank's Someone gonna fight next? I mean, Luke Campbell had a close matchup with Loma. Uh, I don't know who Tank is gonna fight next, but I, I was hoping that Tank fought Loma next. But Loma is uh, he's gonna be fighting Cambosos for whatever reason. I don't know who Coach Calvin said oldie but goodie. So maybe Manny fucking Pacquiao. I don't know. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. You know, uh, <laughs> and I mean, that... the talk with Conor Ben they fell through. Tank doesn't want to fight Conor Ben. And I don't blame him because Conor would be very, that's a huge step. I mean, 147 pounds, welterweight, Conor Ben, that would have been, that would have been a great fight though, legacy-wise, if Tank would have went up there and knocked that man out. Like, now we got to start saying that, yeah, he really is the real deal. Why did he fight Frank so Martin? Why... Uh, Martin I don't know. I don't know. So well, why was he on Twitter, on Twitter just for the no negotiations to fall through? It doesn't make any sense to me. Listen, the, these guys they talk that shit on Twitter, but sometimes the money don't add up, and sometimes they you talk, you say something on Twitter, but then you think about it like, oh, actually, no, this would be dumb. If Tank would have fought Conor Ben and lost, it would have been a dumb fight because Conor is so much bigger than him. So if, if any if you're going to take loss to somebody at like 140 or something. Unless he wanted to do the bullshit that everyone else does and fight a man who way bigger than him, and then when he loses, he can hang his hat on that like, oh, he's bigger than me. But someone says, I started boxing at 19. Is that too late? I want to become a world champion. But there are champions that started later than 19. Only thing I'm going to say to you is if you want to become champion, you have to make boxing your entire life. 
Mm-hmm. They have to work out two to three times a day, going on eight, 10, 12 mile runs, shit like that. Um, you have to make boxing your entire life. You want to be a champion and you started boxing. Even if you start early, is you have to make boxing your entire life. That's what I would say. But uh, yeah, someone says Loma be Haney. I'm not arguing about anything anymore. I gave up months ago. Like, if y'all want to believe Loma B. Haney, fine. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't think Loma B. Haney. I think he had his moments, but I just don't think he did enough. I think, you know, Haney did look like he controlled the fight. He had he had the pace going. Loma's face, just like Regis Progray's face, told the whole story. I think Loma just had better rounds is what it was. Yeah, Loma, the rounds that Loma won... They were less than the amount of rounds that Haney won. The rounds that Loma won, it was like an exclamation on it. But you don't, you can't really grade that as a judge. Like if you get, if you have a 10-9 round, it's, it's just a 10-9 round. But the rounds that Loma won, they were clearly won. Whereas the rounds that Haney won, he was doing shit where casual fans don't really pick up on. Like he was just throwing a right hand to the body over and over and over and over. Don't count. You can win the round on that, but that's a rather quiet round to a casual. They want to see somebody throw four or five punches. Yo, what's up, Wickedy? Yo, what's good, KJ? What's up, y'all? Hey, um, so who wins, man? Uh, Tank Davis, Lomachenko. Yo, um, that's that. You know what? I was gonna ask you that. It's funny you put that up today, cause I swear I was gonna ask you that question last night. Uh, I'm not do. I I can't say Tank, cause Lomachenko's not stupid. He wouldn't run into something like that. He knows what he knows how to I mean, get in and get in out. It ain't even about being stupid because when Tank gets desperate, he'll start hunting, hunting you down. And Wicked, make sure you, yeah, I was ready to say, make sure you know, when Tank gets desperate, he's not going to be trying to land um, the counterpunch. He'll start hunting you down. So Loma could potentially become prey. Yeah, yeah, and I know Loma doesn't have an iron chin neither. I mean, you've seen Lonares put him down and everything. So. Oh, okay, so that is true. I mean, yeah. So yeah, Loma Tinko was dropped by Lamar. I completely Liz. forgot about that, but yeah, you're cool. You know, I know I've I've watched all that stuff before. You know, I remember when he came back and stopped Lenares, but you know, obviously Tank's power is way above Lenares, so hey, I guess right. if Tank hits him, then it's lights out. If Tank hits anybody, it's lights mm-hmm. out. His power is different than any except for Pitbull Cruz. Pitbull Cruz it wasn't lights out. Yo, County Goat. Um yeah. What's up, man? Who wins? Uh, well, Davis Lomachenko and why? Well, here, here's my take first. So you watch UFC, right? No. No. So you didn't see who won on Saturday, Ilya Teporia? Nope. Okay. Well, he he he's a one he's the one forty five champ now. He's the best boxer in the UFC, and I think he'll beat Tank easily. Okay. What? There's no UFC fighter in that a works. boxing match. I think he'll. With that chin up so high, I wish you knew who Ilya Teporia yeah. was. Yeah, oh my god, bro, I'm so glad you bring that up. I watched that event last Saturday, and I, you know, if I'm being completely honest, UFC makes like boxing promo- promoters look like clowns. They really, it, it re- they really do. I know, I know, it's only one organization, but that last event I have watched last Saturday was amazing. That guy Teporia, he could he, really compete with some boxers. Not the best of the best, but he out. could beat some boxers. He would be the best boxer I've seen in the U.S. Touch this out. Touch this out. County Goat, if you get off the live, I want you to make a video, right? I want you to show that guy doing his UFC boxing match. and uh, I want you to say, look, this guy will knock Tank out. And and I want you to go ahead and go viral, man, because people are going to be cussing you out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> up and down in the city. They're going to be cussing you out. But, hey, that's a good that's a good little uh, video to make. If you think that man will be tank, but I'm letting you know right now, Tyson Fury, he embarrassed uh, boxers when he allowed Francis Ngannou to dominate him like that. But for the most part, UFC fighters would get toyed with, like the way that Floyd Mayweather toyed with a Conor McGregor that outweighed him by 20 pounds. They would get toyed with dealing with boxers because boxers are specialists with their hands. UFC fighters, they have to divvy up their time training, um, kicks, punches, wrestling, submission, shit like that. Okay, wait, so here's the thing. Wait, you said the, 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 the way you brought up McGregor and uh, Floyd. The thing about McGregor oh. was he had a karate style boxing stance. This Taporia dude, he doesn't throw kicks. He's a straight boxer. He's a boxer in MMA. He doesn't throw kicks. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. County, I'm sorry, UFC fighters. I lost complete confidence in their boxing skills when Jake Paul knocked out. No, this is a prime. This is I mean, prime. the Willie. The Willie shit was rigged. The real Willie shit was rigged. But um, Jake's entire career is just smoking mirrors. But listen, I don't know who the who the guys that you're talking about, County Goat. But Tank Davis is not no regular boxer. He's an upper crust boxer. Tank for for talent wise, Tank is literally top ten in the world. MMA don't really talk footwork either because they don't they don't put their front foot forward when they fight because they can't because of the takedowns and whatever. Yeah. So making that transition into boxing, they kind of they kind of walk over themselves and cross their feet a this, lot. Hey, but this guy, like I know you probably watch some UFC fighters that are like known as good boxers. They make mistakes, but this guy, like he has he has some firepower in his hands. Like if you, you do yourself a favor and watch his highlights, because he Ooh. he he drops it. He's a Ilya Taporia. He's a yes, Ilya Taporia. Really go to boxing and do good in boxing. I'm not even joking. Like I'm, and he I, will actually he become a UFC champion. champion. This guy. If he box, if he went to boxing right hey, now, he would become. You're gonna nah, find out about this boxing, boxing yeah. stuff when when Anthony Joshua and Francis and Gandhi square off. I think they squaring off March 8th or some shit like that. We are gonna find out, man. But listen, I, um, he, hey, he's not gonna Marvel. win that fight, man. Marcos, we we moving we moving on from the USC boxing shit, but Marcos, um, who wins? Mm -hmm. Man, let's keep going. Tank Davis. You are already. I tank. I got tank. Why? I got tank. Because I just feel like tank is his power is just gonna. I don't. I don't think Loma is gonna deal with tank's power like that. You know what I'm saying? And also mm -hmm. tank, tank. I feel like tank would just like get hit by Loma. And just so you can hit him, and I feel like that would be bad for Loma. You know, I don't think Loma can keep yeah, Tank off think, of him. That's how I think suckers people in, and but Loma is so fast, like landing. That's the thing. Loma could throw four or five punches, and then he'll jump out of the way. Like when you watch Loma Are we fight, talking about Prime Loma. Yeah, well, I mean, even right about now, Loma would give Tank a run for his money. He still fights the same way. It's just that he's gonna get tired in those late rounds. But we know Tank's power yeah, yeah, yeah. twelve rounds. But uh, hey, would, would y'all say he? Fight, um, this is early in his career. He fought Gary Russell. Like long get, in, get out, and he knows how to. He knows pretty much how to how to run. He knows how to stay on the outside until it's time to engage. And that would, I think his style would give Tank help. Even if Tank were to knock him out, I think Tank would be losing on the cards. Would y'all say they're on the same weight, like same exact size, like evenly? Evenly, uh, like yeah. Tank is five five lightweights. Yeah, Tank is five five. Loma is taller than Tank. tank what? Dude, Tank is short as fuck, bro. I thought he's he was up, short. I thought he that's was five why, seven. Why, like he struggles. Uh, that's why he doesn't necessarily want to go to one forty. He's forced to go because his competition went. But Tank Davis might top out at one forty. He might not be fighting at Walter because he's a very very small fighter. The only reason Tank yep. can compete with these dudes is because he's so blessed athletically. Yeah. Um, of course, he's a great boxer. He has IQ. The fact that he has so much power and so much speed and reflex, it allows him to be short and dominate bigger men. Who, hey, who would y'all say like walks around heavier, though? Loma or Tank? Tank. Probably Tank. Loma. Tank. You think I'd be walking I think around? Tank. Tank. Tank be getting out of shape and sitting there. Probably Tank. Tank likes when, to remember when, when ladies. Tank. Remember when Roley posted that video of him dancing, tap dancing with his shirt off? Like Tank looked like he yeah. fucking was like ready to fight Canelo. Like, not ready to fight Canelo, but he does let himself go in between fights. So yeah. So, Tank. I mean, so Loma's a smaller guy, you'd say. Yeah, Tank no, gets big. Really tank just Loma takes better care of his body as far as you know not getting fat, but they're both around the same. Uh, Weight class, they're both around the same weight. Mercedes Reyes, thanks for the follow, man. The reason why I mentioned that is because I feel like Loma's, I feel like Tank could take Loma's punches. Like, you know, he's a, he's a, like, you know, he, yeah. he throws in combinations. Loma's not knocking out Tank. Everybody that came up here is talking about Loma would have knocked Tank out at 130. That was an absurd take to me. I mean, Tank Davis has shown that he's a great yeah. chin. So. Loma and Loma isn't I even. I think Tank can knock out Loma Chinko, I believe. Yeah, Tank can knock out Loma. Tank yeah, Tank out Loma. he just got to have a good game plan and try to walk him down or go to dishes with him or something. I don't know. Oh, I didn't hear. 
I think he should uh catch him late at this age. Loma, yeah. he shows that those last couple of rounds he will get tired. Mm. He could catch him late, but if you don't catch him late, he will lose on the point. He will lose on the scorecard. Hey, but and he, I don't yeah. think he was, he's going to be able to catch him early because Loma knows how to uh, keep a certain amount of distance. But yeah, I like it's going to be the dynamic with Devin Haney was just staying on the outside and those long yep. ass right hands and jabs. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's really sad that we really have we really have to have a conversation about this because they should have fought years ago. I yeah, they should have. Yeah, I think they should have like, fought. Years we shouldn't really be having this conversation. Like, we can't, make, we can't make like you know boxing is so bad because Devin fought Loma and Tio fought Loma. Really, yeah. Same game because it is bad for boxing because they're the most interesting characters pay per view wise. Mm -hmm. So what they do. Uh, that's how the casuals reflect on the sport. Well, honestly, we can't be upset because a lot of the other young guys already fought this man and they beat him. Yeah. The thing with Canelo, like obviously recently, like in the past like year or two, like he's not been trying to fight the people that we want to see him fight. People want to see, yeah. yeah. But he, but he, 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 he trying to fight Hami McGee. Yeah. He don't want to fight Benavidez. He's but he, him. He did fight literally every yeah. single champion at his weight class, one sixty eight. We can't say that about Tank. <laughs> Listen, Canelo at 160 was was really putting in work. Um, at 154 was really putting in work. At Walter was really putting in work. But at 168, it's been kind of like, man, he's had like an and career. He had some big Caleb Plant. And, um, and that's pretty much it. I mean. Caleb Plant was his big, you know, the big win at 168. Yeah, but like uh, oh, Daniel Jacobs fight. is nice. Wickedy, Wickedy, you got me just Daniel Jacobs was a big win as well, even though that was a, a catch weight. But ultimately, recently, he's he went on the European Bum Them Up tour. Then he tried to go uh, fight at light heavyweight, couldn't do it against Bibble. And now he's fighting Jamel Charlo, um, you know, for for undisputed. Charlo was he fighting the bigger brother now? Undisputed was undisputed. So he fighting the nobody bigger really brother won. now, no. Low key, huh? he fighting the bigger brother, the big one, the uh, Jamal. Well, we don't know who he's fighting. That's the whole thing. He's um, they're keeping everyone on the edge. And I, I think it's been a beat as low key, huh? Yeah, because I think he been was fighting like, Hami McGee, but I don't know. No, no, it's not gonna be. Nah, to hear me out. Hear me out, because yeah. like, so in it, in that uh, that Azteca fucking interview, right? He he said he was gonna fight an American. I thought I think he was low key dissing. Fucking Benavidez and just call, like calling him straight an American, you feel me? So that's why I think like I think he's throwing every. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a long shot for sure. I thought that for a second that maybe Canelo is trying to um, your live may contain things not suitable for younger audiences. It's an age, but yeah, TikTok has age restricted my live for whatever reason. But if you in here, make sure you like it on live. We wasn't getting that many views hey. anyway. Uh, fuck it. Anyway. The point I was about to make is I believe Canelo, um, I thought he was for a second, maybe he's trying to throw everyone off and fight David Benavidez. But then I thought about it like, nah, he really just doesn't want to fight David. He could have been fought David. And if, if he was going to fight David, he wouldn't be fighting him in May. He'd be fighting him in September anyway. Because that would be the last fight out of the three fight deal. He was at the last. But hey, what I see in Canelo's like career now, like as he's starting to like, you know, at least past like two years or a year, is that yeah he fights at 168 pounds he probably doesn't walk around like heavier like probably walks around like 175 realistically like he could cut down uh, to 160. Gets up to 180 190 they really say. because i mean canelo when he's not boxing all he's doing is golfing drinking eating enjoying he's a short he's rich, dude man. though like he's a really small like you know people like when you look at him he looks like either a, he'd be a small one 168 pounder considering like there's yeah, a lot of big guys you know what, when, you, when you look at how the waist that he lifts and you look at the way the, that he trains for power and all that, that man is a bulky um, short guy. He's not just short. He's kind of bulky. And then when you look at the fact that, he, you know, he, he failed PD tests and all of that. Yeah, think about it. He's campaigned at light heavyweight. So he is a pretty big guy. But as, as like, time goes on now, like, you know, you can tell he's on his way out. The reason is because he's picking on these smaller guys. I think he's trying to fight at 168 pounds, a comfortable weight he can make. He doesn't want to cut down in weight. Take advantage of that and fight smaller guys because he doesn't want to fight guys like you know, like that are in his weight class. So because they're you know, actually really bigger than him, like David Morell and David Benavidez, all these guys in Delhi, whatever, however you pronounce the name, they're all bigger yeah. than Canelo. They're they're naturally yep, yep. and bigger than him. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He doesn't want to fight those types of guys, you know, too much, too much risk. He's going to fight these smaller guys at a bigger weight class that he fights in to, you know, wrap off his career. Right. What do you think? Uh, what's that guy's tall brother? Is oh, Colin? Smith, Caleb Smith. Do you think he was too? He he was big. Yeah, and... he was big and lanky. David Benavidez and David Morrell, they're big and um, you know, thick paws, but their their lower body is not skinny. Their upper body is not skinny like Caleb Smith. You know, what I mean, they have some some width to their build. And, and they're 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 heavy. They're heavy. <laughs> Go fight at light heavyweight. Benavidez could be fighting at cruiserweight one day. You can't say that really. Like Caleb Smith, he could go up to in um those weight classes, but he wouldn't be a real threat because he's lanky he, and he doesn't really have his feet under him. It's like in a Canelo fight, a lot of times you can see he was off balance and shit. He's kind of too tall, and he's not a, a a super great athlete. Like some tall athletes, they can get away with it because they're super athletic. He's not one of those ones. He's kind of lanky and off balance so it's just different he was a perfect, yeah, Caleb, he was a perfect opponent funny. for canelo because he made canelo look like he was on some live shit but really caleb smith wasn't really like that you know he he didn't have enough foot speed didn't have enough natural balance to really give canelo a problem with his frame yeah for sure if if canelo fought bivol again no Especially not because B- Bivol wanted to fight at 168. So Bivol probably wouldn't be as strong as he was at light heavyweight because Bivol said he's only fighting Canelo at 168. Canelo said no because Canelo was going to lose out of belt and all that. But he wouldn't, stop, um, he wouldn't stop him because he wouldn't be as strong, I don't think, at 168 pounds. But he was still outboxing. He'd do the same shit he did in the yeah. first fight. I mean, Bivol was just too so, big. I mean, like, too I mean, if Canelo. Oh, Canelo no, he wanted to light heavy. Maybe he does get stopped because a lot of people they were sleeping on this, but in those late rounds, Canelo was like, he was looking like he was fading a little bit. So maybe he does get stopped. Oh, well, I mean, I don't think Bivo really stops a lot of fighters. When was the last time he stopped some? But he usually just outboxes yeah. them, puts the pressure yeah, on, and then Canelo, goes to this. The difference is he went up against other light heavyweights. When he right. went up against Canelo, it was times where he was hitting Canelo and Canelo was moving, getting moved all across the ring because Bivo was a, a naturally larger man than him. When Bivol was going up against another light heavyweight, it's different. Those are guys that are the same size as him, so and he does he's not a big puncher, so nine times out of ten, he's not gonna get a stoppage. I think against Canelo, an older version of Canelo, a version of Canelo that's worse even now, uh, than when he fought Bivol, he could potentially get stopped because he's he's gonna be smaller. Bivol has already seen him one time, he knows exactly what to do, and I think he would do it. If Canelo were to take that fight again at the same weight. I think he'd try to improve, but obviously, it's of course, he's, he's not as good as he used to be. So he would definitely still struggle, of course. I don't think he'd win that fight, of course not. Canelo never going to fight Bivol again. Yeah. Everybody, especially in here, make sure y'all tap on the screen. I got an age restriction on the um, the live for whatever reason, but make sure y'all. Oh, wait. That's you crazy. It uh, increases a lot. It's not crazy, man. They. They've been um, doing certain stuff for a while now, for like the past couple of months when it comes to TikTok. And it's all good. It's all love, TikTok. I got I must continue on my journey. Now, um, <clears throat> back to the main topic, man. When I first started this live, I was thinking like Loma would be Tank. But then when I really start thinking about the, the power that this man has, Tank Davis, and the fact that he stopped Mario Barrios, which is one of his most underrated rent wins, he probably would knock Loma the fuck out. And even in Loma's prime, at lightweight, at lightweight especially, if Loma was fighting Tank at lightweight, he would probably get knocked out. At 130, a younger Loma would have a better chance. At 130, I think I'll, I'll make a 55, uh, 45, and I would give the edge to Loma. But any any time at lightweight, young Loma, old Loma, um, black Loma, if Loma went to go get a tan, if Loma grew some dirty white boy dreads, it don't matter. Yeah. He'll get his ass knocked out by Tank Davis. Yeah, he, my, he'll my... get knocked out. It's crazy, like, the power differential when it comes to Tank and Haney. Like, when you mm-hmm. see Tank throw the throw the body shot to Barrios, this guy literally collapsed. Yeah. 
this guy Haney was throwing body shots every 30 seconds on Loma and you know he took them so I wonder how the thing too I've done a video on this on Patreon but when Tank throws he punches with a full range of motion Uh it is all it looks like he's trying to touch his back with his hand you know what I mean like touch the other side of his back when Devin throws he he throws a punch and he brings it back like boxers are taught to throw a punch and bring it back but some boxers they follow all the way through the punches like Hagler and Tank and that's the difference. Plus, Tank is a freak athlete, like super athletic, super athletic. To be 5'5 five, five and to be able to drop those guys that are bigger than you like that, like a Barrios, it's amazing. Someone says the Loma that beat Rigo is the only Loma I see winning. Rigo and Dow was like 37 years old and he was jumping up two weight divisions, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah, he was. He was. Loma, yeah. Loma was supposed to do that. It was only bad because Rigondeau quit. Rigondeau wasn't supposed to quit. Like, bro, you got all of this experience. You could, what you could come age up with did uh, Loma started boxing? Loma started boxing like three or four, bro. Whoa. Would Loma even? I mean, it's not like impressive, that. but it's not like he's undefeated. Like, a, this is the thing when it comes to what age you start boxing. There are fighters who are undefeated who beat every man who started boxing. After his point, some of them started boxing out of the crib like Floyd. Uh, some of them started boxing as teenagers. Some of them started boxing as children. It all comes down to the individual. Loma is supposed to be undefeated when you look at the way that he was prepared. The mm-hmm. man had 400 amateur fights. The man was boxing since he was three years old. Mm-hmm. He has way more experience than Tiafimo and Devin Haney, but he lost to both of them. And he also lost to Orlando Salido, somebody that he had no business lo- uh, losing to. You would never think, you, like, if you were to just uh, look at both of their both amateur background, I don't even know if Salido was ever an amateur, but if you were to look at Loma's amateur pedigree, and you was like, yeah, he's about to be matched up with Orlando Salido, you would not be like, oh yeah, I got my money on Orlando. Yeah. Salido for life. We, we about to get paid, man. You would never you would never say that. So Loma wasn't supposed to lose to no damn Salido. What's up, Don, what's up, what's up? I think Loma, the problem with Loma, he was looking for that great amateur crew, that, that, uh, gold, that gold medal thing twice. He stayed the amateur too long. Too long. They had to rush him. Yep. So and and the thing is, they didn't even have to rush him. Bob Aram wanted him to be the fastest person to a title and all of this. And it's like they could have gave that man at least three or four fights. Um, that's why he lost to Salido. Like he he hadn't really adjusted to the pro style just yet. And Salido comes in there hitting him with a couple of nut shots and a bunch of uh, a bunch of body attacks. And Loma didn't know what to do in real time. So if Bob mm-hmm. wasn't trying to promote him as like the best thing ever, and if you would have gave him five or six fights to get, you know, get a cousin to the uh, professional game, the man might still be undefeated to this day, in my opinion. Yeah, but a whole, sometimes being a great amateur don't lead to being a great pro. A great pro. A lot of times, actually, a lot of times it doesn't because the game is totally different. Three rounds versus 12. Whoa. Totally different. Yeah. For sure. KJ, I have a question. I know this is kind of off topic, but I have a question. Who do you think would win if it if it just happened? Virgil B. I had to go with David. Oh, David hey, Benavidez. David. No, man. It's kind of. I'm going with Virgil Benavidez, man. David Benavidez hasn't uh, even fought at light heavyweight. Before. Yeah, I don't know. No, can he protect his body, too? So I'm going to have to go with Virgil B, man. Was, only way I think I got David, only way I got David B and Bertha B if, if, if they age him out. I think Bertha B is already 40. So if that fight doesn't happen for another two to three years, then I'll pick Benavidez. But if they fight like next year, yeah. I'm gonna pick Bertha B if like that man. I, I don't think know. Berge, I think Bertha B can end up beating him and get the Canelo fight probably. Mike. Nah, hell Canelo will never fight that man. What? Oh, hell. <laughs> but that is just that's not a smart fight. Like but that's definitely yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking, man. I don't know. He no, he he be like heavyweight he there be with power. That guy, they they just hey Don Judah, tell him what what you said. You said that Roberto Duran fighting Thomas Hearns at that time was a it was a horrible matchmaking. That's what it would be like. Yeah, if Canelo was fighting Berto Beer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember that fight. A, that yeah. was a horrible fight. Yeah, I wouldn't even have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes matchups are not good. It's similar yeah. to Paul Williams when um when um 
except for the power when 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 Floyd turned down Paul Williams. It was like, dude, that dude arms is double the length of mine. He's about five inches taller than me. He's a natural welterweight. It's just not a good matchup. Paul Williams was on some fantastic force shit for real for his size. Like he was like he was huge and had an unfair advantage. Yeah, that, that wasn't a good matchup for Floyd coming from now. Floyd was a natural welterweight and he turned that down. I, I'd had to give him the business. He would, but he come from 130. Sometimes when you move up, you gotta you gotta pick and choose sometimes, man. It's not your yeah. natural weight class. It's just or, not. You're going, or you're gonna end up making a loss. Many too. Oh, well, you, yeah. But he wasn't interested in losing no money. Right. Some people take the business part more important than the you know than the, the legacy the, the legacy of the school. Yeah. So yeah, and at the end of the day, the money is a part of his legacy. So he made all the I think Floyd made all the right moves when you look at it in high school. Sure, because he fought a lot of people. It's not like he didn't fight anybody. You can't fight every damn body. Everybody. And we, and then they start this is where I get crazy with people because they start saying the old guys, bro, Mike McCallum got ducked by every fighter we love. Sugar Ray, Marvin well, Hagler, a lot about that. Tommy Hearn, everybody. Yeah. Everybody ducked him. So he called out that, James Tony too, though. He called out everybody. So he fought James Tony. So, oh, he sparred him too. I forgot about that. Oh, he fought him in a real fight. They had like two. Yeah. James Tony ain't never ducked nobody. nobody James Tony was one of the two fighters that was fought King Kong, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I respect and it's because hey, it's because James Tony, James Tony, uh, yeah. well, this is why I think it is. Number one, he was a beast with the Philly. Everybody talked about Floyd Mayweather in the Philly show. James Tony defense with that show was immaculate. Yeah. Number two, James Tony was a guy that was he's coming from football and he was uh a little bit over two hundred pounds. So when he dropped to get down to one sixty and you know did, did the boxing thing, once he started going up in weight, he was already used to moving his body with that weight because he came from that football background. Now you add in mm -hmm. the Philly Shell defense and the fact that the man was just naturally tough as hell. Yeah. And anybody and go against anybody. Like James Tony is a, he's one of those guys that is not talked about as much as he should be. But if you watch him, he was amazing. Yeah, he was. He was, for real. I think people look hey, at the Jones fight and oh yeah. Just yep. kinda yep. Yep. just kinda like eliminated him. Eliminated him. They didn't look at the end of the fight when he started coming on. If that would have been a fifteen round fight. I don't think Roy would have won. Roy was gonna win. Yeah, I believe. Roy I mean, it, won. for real, for real, James Tony had uh, had a real training regimen. He probably would be. Real. I mean, him, James yeah, Tony, yeah. just he had stuff going on with his manager and stuff. I think too. That he had stuff time. with his manager, but listen, yeah. James Tony just sparred. He didn't do road work. Yeah, he didn't do back. none of that, man. His train, his trainer told him he could have been one of the best heavyweights. I think. Um, I mean, Roy. I mean, he he wasn't necessarily a real a natural heavyweight. He he was able to campaign yeah. heavyweight. Because yeah. he had a special body. I told you he came from football, but he would yeah. have won a lot of those big fights. Like he probably would have beat uh, Roy Jones if he trained like a real boxer mm -hmm. as opposed to just. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he did that. That's what he used to spar in the uh, Detroit gym, I think. He used to spar at some gym. That's where he's from. Yeah. But he's he from Ann Arbor, which is yeah. next door. So, yeah, well, I, he was like Rafredo Refred, Benitez. Benitez never worked out. <laughs> right, he thought he. And you see, you see, it caught up with him yeah. in the big fights. In the big fights, it caught up with him. Yeah, especially when them days was fifteen rounds. By the time, oh, yeah. Was, yeah, by the time that thirteenth round came, he, he started flashing up. That's how Sugar Ray yep. got him. And that fourteenth round got him up. And, and yeah, so Ray, a lot of people. Ray Leonard was a freak to train. Like Ray Leonard said, he trained six months for the uh, Roberto Duran. The, the Roberto Duran won, and when you watch it. The way that he was able to, they both was able to take immense punishment in that fight. Even though Duran won, that was a very close fight. And the, yeah. the shots that Ray was able to take and the, the flurries and, and power he was able to throw in the 12, 13, 14, 15 round, it, I do believe that he trained for six months. Like, that shit is, yeah. that's crazy, man. But when Benitez he not trained in six months for no fucking fight. And it See, makes when, a difference. When that fight, when, when that fight was being made, like, the thing with Sugar Ray was, I'm not letting this 135 pounder come up here and beat me. So he fought Duran fight. If he had fought his fight yeah, the first time, it you know. And now, now they also said Duran said something to his wife that uh yeah um inflamed him yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Sugar Ray, that was just a dumb um game plan. If he would have just been himself, Sugar Ray, we wouldn't have got a classic fight. We wouldn't have got one of those wars. 
but he won. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He the one. Yeah, he would have won that fight. I'm kind of glad that he made that decision because that fight, I was watching yeah. that fight today in the gym. And uh, it was classic. Like, they, we don't get fight. We thought that's how the Spence uh, Crawford fight was going to be. Yeah. There yeah. hasn't really been a fight like that since it happened. I, I, yeah. I, like the, I like the Tommy Hearn Sugar Ray fight. I, I love that fight. You know, that, that, now, that's a great fight as well. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about, well, matter of fact, you could put, I'm, I'm talking about mainly the era. So we haven't had fights yeah. like that since that era. Because no. yeah. uh, the Hearns and the Sugar Ray is pretty much the greatest fights ever. Um, yeah. But we haven't we haven't gotten nothing like that at, at welterweight. No. Um, since yeah. since then. No, not really. Not not when you had two big names. The, uh, Terry Norris versus Major Taylor fight. That, that, that was, was a good that fight. That was welterweight. That was super welterweight. Uh, super welterweight. Yeah, and and and, and <laughs> that was a washed up, washed up Major Taylor. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was. So I took a lot of Mildred. Wait, Mildred. Yeah, and he beat, he beat my boy Aaron Davis for the welterweight title, and then lost. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who that guy is. He lost the title to Mildred Taylor, but he ain't supposed to lose. He got knocked out. Yeah, then he went man. up to fight. He got whooped by no, Chavez. No, Chavez before, beat him like before, two times. That was before. That was before the Chavez fight. When he when he lost to Chavez, he moved up to welterweight. My man Aaron Davis had just knocked out Mark Brillen. So he mm -hmm. got the fight with Melody Teller, and he let Melody Teller out beat him after. after we were shocked, like, dude. And Melody then he Teller was beating Chavez, and he uh, he was beating him into the twelfth round. He got knocked out. He was like tired that, after that, man. He was, and that was crazy. He was mentally destroyed after that fight. Yeah, and, he he, he was. He he wasn't yeah. talking right. None Usually of that. when you lose a fight like that, you you barely can come back. That's, it's not too many Tommy Hearns in, in boxing. Right. So we got Tommy Hearns yeah. and Sugar Ray knocked him out because it was, he was winning the whole fight. And yeah. his spaghetti legs didn't last. <laughs> and he got, yeah. he got but you know what else, yeah. though? Tommy, Thomas Hearns, another guy that didn't like to do road work, didn't like to do uh, traditional training. He just liked to, mm -hmm. uh, you can go watch get out and do like ab shit, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. But he didn't like to do the, the traditional boxing yeah. training. And you see it, it caught up with him. Yeah. So I'm just the only thing I think is like, damn, imagine if this man went on an eight mile run or at least mm -hmm. a six mile run regularly. He probably he might have had those legs to go 15 rounds. Cause if it was a 12 round fight with him and Sugar Ray, he would have won. He yep. would have won. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But he was an upper yeah. body person. So you got yeah. boxers, and you you know what I'm talking about. Some boxers yeah. they all upper body. And they oh, like man. big, strong upper bodies with wide, wide shoulders. It was a fighter in Brooklyn named Junior Jones. He was like that. He used to like to get the wide upper body, and he never did nothing with his spaghetti legs, so he couldn't last. But when he finally the, got the to them, championship the, round, them, okay. yep. yeah, the, he did beat Marco Antonio Barrera two times, but he let Kennedy McKinney destroy him, and then Marco killed, destroyed Kennedy McKinney. So you know, Styles make fights, but I always thought Junior Jones, if you'd have just roped out them legs a little bit, you could have lasted a little longer with Kennedy. You couldn't deal I with mean, it. That's boxing. Pretty much is all is. I think it's all legs. Every yes. sport should, it should be from the ground up. So sir, yeah. first you trying to train the power. You got to train those legs. You got to. Oh, with great Don Don What's Judah. Up, man? The guy you're talking about, Junior what, Junior Jones, was his nickname Poison. Poison, yeah, Poison. Poison, poison Junior Jones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, KJ. He was like the small Tommy Hearns. They used to call him Tommy Hearns because he was built like Tommy Hearns. This with a nice wide upper body, but his legs was like spaghetti. <laughs> I never understood. Dude. I, I never understood dudes in the gym like that. All this wide upper body from doing pull ups. About, yeah. Legs just like <laughs> Wilder, <laughs> man. Wilder's legs. Yeah, yeah. You ain't lying about That's that, man. People, leg workouts are harder. That's probably why people avoid them. And you're gonna be sore longer. So people be like, nah, fuck that. Arms, you think you your arms out all hard and then do the same shit with your arms the next day. I know yeah. somebody in the boxing gym, they like a bodybuilder, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, but that's not good for boxing. Yeah, that's not really not, bro. Not and that's why I try not I try not to be a bodybuilder. Uh -huh. it it, knocks it people out. Good for the amateurs, but that's about it. Do you, do you think yeah, Wilder I'm trying to get out? Is fast, man. Okay. Do you think Wilder knocks be... people out because he has like basketball legs? <laughs> I mean, he has skinny legs, but he hey, has I got... skinny legs all together. Hey. And uh, sometimes a lot of skinny leg fighters like Ray Robinson, uh, Wilder, 
they generate power. Tommy, Tommy Hearn, they generate power, but a lot of times you see uh, they be getting tired. Ray Robinson yeah, was like different. Ryan. Ray Robinson. Ray Wilder is another guy who, who didn't do road work. He said road work was bad for your legs. But you see a pattern. The guys who don't want to do that road work and develop their legs, because that's what road work does, it develops their legs. Hey, Crawford do, I think Crawford do world work too, though. No, I don't know. Do do I didn't, I didn't say he did it. He does road work. Yeah, he does. A lot of I'm saying Wilder is another a guy lot of who, fighters. Power who gets tired of yeah. the pounds, but he says he doesn't like to do road work. Crawford, That's crazy. Deadlifts. They, somebody said they seen Crawford do a deadlift in his training with shock how much he could lift. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he used to wrestle back in high school, too. That's where he get that strength from. Yeah. That's a strong dude. Yeah, yeah, he used to be a wrestler. That's what James Brown said, and get on up. I'm skinny, but I'm strong. That, that's get on up. But that's another thing. Your, your legs don't have to actually be big to be strong. Look big to be strong. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You don't have to be big, but you, as long as you work your legs out and do your road work, your legs should have the strength. You don't have to have Nassim Hamid legs for you to have strong legs because he has some. Right. He, he, was, he was built from the ground up. He, yeah. he was a clown in the ring, but... His 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 body was made for boxing. That's why he could be losing a whole fight and then bam, one punch. Yeah, he turned the fight yeah, around. Yeah, and that's why his ass would do that flip into the ring too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to do that too. He used to come in the ring, do it, or flip yeah. and do his little dance moves. Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao another guy with uh, his yep. legs look strong. That they are got strong, disgusting they look, they calves. Along with the, yeah. That's where your power comes from. Most of the time, see, you you can have power in your legs. Like Tommy Hearn was a straight puncher, so he didn't need legs for his power because yep. he was a straight that straight right hand. Emmanuel Stewart taught him because he didn't always have that. Emmanuel Stewart taught him that that he didn't need his legs for that. But when it's time to throw them hooks and them body shots, when you can then, dig in, he couldn't. Then the man got the man got like what a seventy eight or eight inch. He was a six foot. What a six for one welterweight? That's that's the only yeah. other person I know was like was Paul Williams. I don't know nobody else that, right. that was tall like that as a welterweight. That a six one or six three, something like that. Six two. So, so that's where a lot of that power comes to. That's a long level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Seven, eight, 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 reach, coming down on somebody. Imagine you Roberto Duran, you five five, mm. and mother coming from a tower, uh dropping a bomb right on your temple, like boom. Yeah, that, 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 that was a crazy fight. Yeah. And then, then you know how boxing is crazy because you'll get Tommy Hearn would knock out Roberto Duran, Hagler mm -hmm. knock out Tommy Hearn, and then Duran from yeah. Hagler and go the whole twelve rounds. Right. Yeah. That shit is and then, and then, and then we got the controversial shit. We all people people probably thought that Sugar Ray might not have made it out with Hagler, but he comes out with that with a controversial uh, uh victory. Yeah. But I always talk yeah, about yeah. Sugar Ray. Um, he he paid Marvin Hagler made a mistake by taking the money. And, and giving Sugar Ray a bigger ring, you never give a a a, 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 a dude with leg that that would ring generalship yeah. like that a bigger ring. I think Sugar Ray, uh, he had ring IQ too, though. Yeah, well, he would have lost that fight had they fought in the regular Ray ring. He knew how to he knew how to steal rounds. Like you go watch that fight. Yeah. At the end of that, at the yeah. end of like three or four rounds, he does the flurry. He gets the crowd. Well, he he does what he's supposed well, to. Well, he's the one who started. Sugar Ray is the one who started the ten second thing where they go like this. In the 10 seconds, Sugar Ray started that <laughs> from that fight. He told him when it's 10 seconds left in the round, bang on the ring. I mean, the, the mat. I Bro, didn't what? even know that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, but Sugar Ray started said, that. That's ring IQ wait, anyway. wait, wait. What you just hit, bro? That's, you you going to die. That's not the wall. That's the ceramic tie. I mean, the, um, the, um, the cabinet thing. Yeah, I got the punching bag over here, too. So I can hit that, seconds, though. The last 10 seconds, he was going to punch and the, and the judge would give him the round. Yeah, that's that's, well, that's some that's some boxing trivia for y'all that a lot of people did not know. I had no idea that that no. um that little sound that they make at ten seconds was yeah. originated in that fight with Sugar Ray. Yeah, and that's very like like uh, NBA was saying. That's now that's boxing IQ right there. When you tell them, hey, last ten seconds, let me know because I'm a flurry and I'm gonna steal the round. That's yeah. yeah, and then everybody started doing it. Trying to do it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it started becoming okay. Letting the fighters know, hey, ten seconds left in the round. And you know, so you do your thing, whatever you could do to steal around. There's only 10 seconds left, so I could take a chance and get hit with a shot. Mm. You know, it was, it was a good tactic by Sugar Ray. I still think he cheated in that fight. <laughs> bigger ring and all that. I was like, man, don't, but it's Hagler's fault. It was Hagler's fault. My thing is this, man. 
the Hagler Sugar Ray is a controversial decision, but the worst decision is uh, Thomas Hearns Sugar Ray. Oh, that was that hard. Was cool. Sugar Ray lost that fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but man, that that yeah he, he man did. Like, come on, man. The man almost get dropped fight. twice. Yeah. yeah. He said Tom won that hey, fight. I, I, I ain't going to lie. I, no I, I have a question for everyone, and this one actually goes to Don Judah because you seem to know a lot about boxing. Mm. What do you think about the fight with Aaron Pryor and Alexis Arguello when he drank that stuff? Yeah, that I gave him Lewis was always a, a, a cheat. But you know they 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 unbanned him for boxing, but yeah, they did. I don't know who was in that. But you know I, it could have been steroids. and drink steroids. Yeah, you so can't do that though, for real. It could have been the energy. I don't know what it was, but you well, know that was kind of weird. Not that one, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to Gatorade, bro? He was drinking. He handed, they handed him a a bottle to drink, and he said, "Not that one, the other one." So when he gave it to him. Aaron Pryor came out with more energy, like it was the first round again. Hmm. And people were like, what the? That, hey, let's rewind that. And when they seen him do that, that's when they said, oh, this motherfucker cheated. He yeah. cheated. He cheated. <laughs> that was crazy. I, I want to know what they gave him pre-workout. But but nobody cared because Aaron Pryor was, it was uh, all through Aaron Pryor's career, he was getting knocked down. And then when he get back up, he destroyed the opponent. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, if you want to be Aaron Pryor, don't knock him down unless you're knocking him out. Because right. every time Aaron Pryor got knocked down, he tore his opponent up. He now, I, was the fight. I don't know who he was fighting, but it was some dude with a, uh, with a George Jefferson haircut. Like, he had the bald, but the hair on the side. He knocks yeah. Aaron Pryor down. Yes. Aaron Pryor jumps up, does yeah. the Ali shuffle, starts talking shit to him, and then goes out there and stops the guy. And I was mm-hmm. like, damn. Yeah. And he was a square fighter. He was Aaron Pryor had a fight with both feet facing you. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I never understood how he won 40, what, 41 fights like that. I mean, I think and I was sick. that damn, well, number one, they were cheating. Number two, just the pressure. And then he, he would hit people yeah. at angles, like the angles that everyone was like, oh, Lomachenko used angles. Mm-hmm. Aaron Pryor was using the same angles, and he was switching up uh, stances and shit, and he was doing it yeah, over and right. over. Like, he had a yeah. very orthodox style. With, with a yeah, lot of very orthodox. Yeah. I guess when you're not used to seeing that in the gym, it's hard to beat that, because it's like, I don't see this in the gym. Right. This guy's real. He throwing. He he was he was similar. You know who fight like who who fight like him? Pacquiao yeah, exactly. fight like Aaron Pryor. But but Aaron Pryor and both of them. Hey, that's a great um that's a great analogy. I mean a great comparison because yeah both that's a great comparison though. <laughs> yeah, both of them was cheating. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, always tell. I said, how come at one period of time Pacquiao was able to um drop guys like who who was that um Shane Mosley. Which one of the African was it Ike Corte or, or which one of the African guys he had dropped and was scared to throw punches at him? He was hitting them so hard. Was that uh, was that um Ike Corte or it was one of the African fighters? I can't remember which one because I always get, wasn't Leo Robert. He... I always get Ike Corte and um the other African dude mixed up. Mm. But anyway, these guys are big welterweights. And they were scared. He was scared to throw punches because Pacquiao was hitting him so hard. Mm. And then when Pacquiao go back down to fighting Marquez and all these, he can't even hurt them no more. Because yeah, after he, he got pulled, the same after they pulled his card with the steroid thing, it was like, okay, we got to stop the steroid. Then he couldn't knock nobody out. Couldn't knock nobody out no more. So I was like, that's kind of weird. Man. That's crazy. That's, that, and it, again, if you know, he was so he was so positive that he could beat Floyd. Yes. Yeah. But when they said take the test, it was like, no, I ain't taking no test. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That was that you was it. That's when the curtain got pulled right there. Yeah. And you gave up a hundred million dollars for a test. Come on. Drug test. Yeah. yeah. So you killing me? Yeah. So he he was he was he was juicing. Yeah. He was juicing. No, there's no way in the world you come up from that that low weight class all the way up to one fifty four and you knocking guys not out. out. Not, if you not don't rely on your skill set, knocking them out. Yeah. It's not like he was yeah. pulling Roberto Duran. Allow the skill set when he started to fight those guys who were yeah, way exactly. bigger than him. Good Floyd exactly. had to rely on his skill set. That's why the knockouts went down. Yeah. That's why people started calling Floyd Bourne. That's how it is with you know the natural order of things. You're fighting a man who's naturally bigger than you, so the power isn't going to have the same effect. But, but what's his name? Guys, um, they, they, they try to uh, cheat the system. Even when you look at uh, Roy Jones, Roy Jones had uh, testosterone levels that were unnatural. So yeah. it's like, how the hell does Roy go all the way up to heavyweight? Yeah. Uh, but he tested positive too. Yeah, Roy tested too. positive. I forgot who he was fighting. 
It's funny because Roy yeah. was fighting somebody and he was like, his his physique just looked the unnatural. It's too, so yeah, unnatural. So yeah. after the fight was tested him, he came up positive. Yeah. You know why they, they let it slide? Because the guy he was fighting was positive too. <laughs> so Wait, who he was fight. fighting though? I forgot the guy. You could, it's on Google. You could Google it. And um, I forgot. It was a nobody. So it wasn't nobody because that's what mostly Roy fought was nobodies. So you can't even yeah, remember. Yeah, I remember you was telling me a story about he was fighting some dude in jail or something like that. I can't remember. Roy fought so many. If Roy fought about, all right, if Roy had, I forgot him. If Roy had 60 fight, 35 of them had full-time jobs. Yeah. So... You know, come on, man. We used to call him the journeyman destroyer. I'm, I'm not knocking the dude. I'm not saying he wasn't a good no, you fighter. Just I'm the just facts, man. You just stating the facts. I'm stating facts. Yeah, I'm you were speaking facts. facts, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, I mean, dude. at the end of the, a lot of people don't understand what? this, but at the end of the day, boxing, professional boxing is business first. Yeah. So if somebody can pack a stadium, they're gonna milk that cow. They're gonna try to make that man look as good as they can make him look until he can no longer pack that stadium. Yeah. That means that means making him avoid certain certain guys. That means matching him up with dudes with a full time job. That's what they got to do because it's entertainment. Yeah, so they was putting him in there with just regular people. You know, like my man Richie Frazier was a full time cop. I mean, it's, he he wanted to be a boxer. He told me he took the he took the fight because it was four hundred thousand dollars. He was like, I paid off my house. Yeah, I I'll take it. Oh, damn, Roy Jones. I was thirty seven, thirty eight years old. So <laughs> he was like, he offered me four hundred thousand. Lonnie didn't take it. So he offered that's another crazy. thing. But he offered when you get to the highest he, level of boxing, ain't no losing, man. Yeah, he offered you get, Lonnie Bradley. And he said, hell no. And Lonnie Bradley was a WBO champ. And mm. when Roy offered him a million, he was like, hell no. He said, if I fight Roy, I'm going to get a million, but that's going to be the end of my career. Because <laughs> Don King wasn't, because you know how it is. If you lose when you with Don King, you done. Yeah, you out of there. That's now, it. Did he, did he ever make a, uh, I mean, unless he truly loved the sport, like I don't know, I would have still took that million and took that chance because if, if you get in there with it with Roy, you got a chance to uh, you can ruin your career if you lose, but you also have a chance to advance your career if you win. So, yeah, bro. his team was like, nah, you're not ready for Roy. So he fought. I think he fought Simon Brown, mm -hmm. and he barely beat Simon Brown, and that's when I was like, yeah, you might not want to fuck with Roy <laughs> because Man, he was a good man. amateur. I know that much. Yeah, I, yeah, was, was I ain't gonna lie. I took a million. But he was a good amateur, but he never progressed in the pros. It was like he stayed the same. Because you know, people don't want to, they don't want to change that regimen. The mm -hmm. pro regimen, if you're trying to be successful, yeah. you have to put your body through all types of punishment. Like, it dudes be like, nah. Uh, nah. I mean, well, why give your, you know, I don't know, because he was a great amateur. He won four New York Golden Gloves, and he was, he was the runner, he was the backup in the Olympic trials. I mean, the Olympics. He was the backup. If Raul Marquez would have got hurt, it's a different. If you take the head gear off, like I don't know if you ever. I mean, you box, but when I be sparring uh, with no if, with no head gear, and because me and my friend do it, we spar without the head gear with like the teams on, yeah. and it's a difference. Uh, and then 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 them guys, they 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 take the gloves size size down. So now you fighting with ten ounce gloves instead of the twelve ounce that you used to in the, in the Olympics. So that's that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of yeah, but you not everybody to do that. Do over that. thirty fights in the pros. Yeah. Dude was a WBO champ. Mm -hmm. and he had over. And he didn't want to fight for me. No? What? No, this team told him no. You're not ready for Roy Jones. Man, no. my team no. couldn't get me out of there. I'm sorry. Hey, my my yeah, coach Ben told that. me I ain't ready for that fight because I'm gonna fight him. I'm regardless. I'm fighting. Bro. I'm, he gonna have to I'm pay okay. I'm okay. I need that buddy, man. They regret that. They regret it afterwards. I need to pay. They regret it. He's never gonna. He was never gonna make a million dollars in one night like that. I don't know because it's not it's about, it's about, it's about, it's about the name. It's about the name. Yeah. That's what sells. The name sells. Not the yeah. not the skills. Not the boxers. Roy's name would have would have uh, gave that man a million dollars. So they made a bad you know, uh, decision. Because he was a decent fighter. He had a good amateur name. So when he turned pro, once he won that title, Roy was like, "Oh, I'll give you a million. Because Roy knew he didn't have the skills. To like yeah, beat him. Yeah. Roy looked at him like, oh, he got a name. They called him the next Sugar Ray Robinson of Harlem. So he got the name. If I beat his ass, then they're gonna say, well, Roy fought somebody and knocked him out. Because right. he felt I felt Roy's skills was way more dominant. Like way more dominant. And they was the same age, so it was no difference. We all was born 1968. Roy was mm -hmm. born 69, but we was all born. He just happened to be four years behind Roy. Roy was in the 88 Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> 
the two Olympics. So yeah, with, with Oscar De La Hoya. So, but they was the same age. Hmm. So it was like, eh, nah, don't don't fight Roy. <laughs> I would, yeah. man, if it was me, that's shit, that 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 money. Roy would have to prove me. <laughs> and after it was over, give me my check. That's all right. I care about. Hey, Kappa, yeah, Kappa, what's yo, what's good, up, man? everybody? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Yeah, yeah good to see, good to hear everybody. I'm listening. I just got in, just got in the door, but I'm getting caught up. Who wins what? <laughs> oh, now Tank Davis and Lomachenko, if they ever got in that ring, who you got winning and why? I got yeah. Tank winning that, and why? Tank is aggressive. Tank is one of the he's the powerfulest man. I will never keep changing it, and I keep saying it. When you got uh 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 uh, uh our boy Mike Tyson backing, who's the hardest hitter. In boxing, he says Javante Davis Lavin ain't got a chance. He ain't got a chance to me. All that movement and all that tank gonna break that down, stop them feet. <laughs> he gonna break that body down and do what he do. And I give it a tank. Yeah, I do too. And um, I, yeah, you tank too. Me, I think Loma could be hit, and if he get hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah now, now years ago he couldn't get hit. Some years, no, he couldn't get hit some years ago. That was one hell of a dude on the line, boy. That man, that man gave you everything off that line. He's not doing that no and, more. Um, and, and and remember, what's the guy that Tank knocked out? He dropped Loma. What's, and and oh, one third, Lenares dropped Loma. Lenares yeah, no, right. Dropped Loma, so he could get hit. He got he could got hit back then. Yeah. He definitely could hit now because he's yeah. older. So that's one of the disadvantages of him because he's old. He just had a birthday yesterday. Yeah, he's old now. Yeah. 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 So Tank is what thirty. 28, 9, 28. Oh, man, come on, man. No, That's a young dude, man. That, and he got hit by him. So, But there's so much going think, on right now in boxing. Take a flush uh, a flush uppercut from, from Tank. I don't think nobody could do, take that. And, and 130, 135. But I don't know if you guys been keeping up with what's going on. It's some crazy stuff going on in boxing. Some unbelievable t twists and turns. Uh, uh, I ain't trying to change the topic to be the host, but I just want to talk to the host, man. It's so much going on, man. My head was hey, spinning. Man, if there's something going on, go ahead and tell it, brother. Well, yeah, well, man. I'm, well, I'm looking. I'm first of all, I didn't know. Peace, I, I didn't know pa Pacquiao was going out for the Olympics. That's number one. For the what? <laughs> for the Olympics. I, I did not know. Like, so you didn't even know. I to go to the no, Olympics. No, I, 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 I like four years old. Article about that last year. Pacquiao wait, wait, said I he wanted we... to go back to the Olympics. I don't know what the hell, but he he mentioned that last year. I didn't. Know he, he did it this year, and and the, yeah. and, the, and the fed the doctors turned him down. They turned him down. So that's why. Okay, why is he boxing? and said eight weeks or whatever because the tournament started. <laughs> whatever and um, uh, but he said uh he's not uh, uh going after uh Terrence Crawford. Okay, that's not going to happen. Want to fight, fight pro, you can't fight the well, Olympics. That's just a U.S. thing. Because Keisha Davis oh, fought pro, and then went back and fought yeah. the Olympics. They changed the rules. The, oh, his age yeah, is he's forty know. years old, and the doctors age didn't prove the age. And he's too old. Okay, the, a cutoff cut is forty. Right, 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 right. right. Cutoff is forty. Right. Yeah, it's forty. Oh, okay. The cutoff. You, you know what's funny about that whole thing, uh -huh. and how you know. Manny Pacquiao has such a like grip on like you know the casual fan base that I was looking through the comments of like I think it was Hype Beast right, which is like a really popular like uh, it's a it's a really popular Instagram page for like younger people you know what I mean so they post stuff about music con you know, pop culture stuff so for Manny Pacquiao to appear on there means he's pop culture you feel me so the point I'm making is I was looking at the comment section and everybody was like no Pacquiao they should let him fly let him fly let him and I'm just sitting here like what the fuck are y'all talking about this man is 45 years old he's gonna get fucking killed but like what, like I know he's Pacquiao but like like he's 45 y'all like like come on now 45 bro like yeah, that, wow yeah so that means Terry you know Crawford was right now Y'all, y'all want to know something? Pacquiao, he would have got one more attack against Mayweather. Mayweather would have gave him a rematch, but after the fight, and it ain't happened with Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao. You know what? Y'all said he hurt, his, he hurt his arm. There you go. So when he did that, Floyd said, "Yeah, I'm not fighting you again exactly. because you're not supposed to get up on this stage and try to make an excuse. Just say I was a better man." So Pacquiao messed his own self up by not being honest. He came yep. up talking about, "Oh, I hurt my arm," blah blah blah, instead of just saying, "Yeah." I thought that I was gonna be Floyd after all of these years. Floyd was better, and and that's what fucked up his money. There was no, there was no rematch. Yeah, exactly. What the race say he talked himself out of a rematch in a in yep. a big payday. And then I'm hearing, come on, help me out, guys. 
And then I'm hearing that uh uh they're gonna make it mandatory for uh, Benavidez to fight uh yeah. Canelo Yeah, but it's not a real mandatory. Yeah, he going Okay, it's not a real man. I thought so. It's not a real it's mandatory. Okay. Because they're gonna make it a mandatory, but they didn't put a date on it. Okay. So what yeah, type of mandatory is that? They, and the reason I mean, they that's they weird, on, man. The reason I mean, they, Canelo they put a date watching. on it is because if they put a date on it, then all Canelo's gonna do is forfeit the belt. Yeah. Do you think he got so you would you consider that a duck? No, it is. Canelo, listen, Canelo has accomplished uh everything that he, he could from the sport. Uh mm -hmm. he's he not necessarily ducking because it was guys that Floyd could have fought uh for his last couple of fights that he that he didn't want that he didn't fight because it was just from a different era. That's true. Really Benavidez in a in a different era. Pat, um Canelo on the way out. I want to see Canelo fight Benavidez because that's what boxing is about. You know what I mean? You go up against somebody that you're not supposed to beat, you beat him. That's what Ali did when he beat Foreman. Ali was the older man. Foreman was the younger man. Ali was the underdog. So right now, we got a chance to witness greatness, and Canelo could really go down as the greatest Mexican fighter ever and shit. And he could really do something that nobody expects him to do, beating a larger man, a man who could be fighting a light heavyweight. So he has a chance to cement himself forever in history. But I think he's running away from that. That's well, what I'm saying. I agree with you. If 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 been sorry if Benavides sorry. just asked him for the fight, but it's been about four years. Yeah. Well, so Benavides right oh, now they're yeah. talking about oh, yeah, it's not going to look right. good. Four years it is a duck. Yeah, it's been a while. It's not going to look good for him if Carnelo takes the pathway and he's standing there with the belt, and it's going to look bad for him. His yeah. stocks go down, so he has to go up and wait and move on. He's going to have yep. to. Yep. Yep. ASAP. I mean, real soon. Beat and and Bivol 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 because who we don't even we don't even know who uh Canelo gonna fight Cinco de Mayo Day. We don't even know that. We don't. I, I think he should take one more fight. I mean, it ain't gonna be Muhammad he can do. Magia, he's. I mean, he gonna beat the shit out of the dude. <laughs> he sure is. No, okay, beat the shit out of the dude. This dude ain't did nothing in boxing since 154 pounds, and now all of a sudden he's a and terror he's in, in boxing. He's Come on. Yeah, he's, he's like a terror. Man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, they serving that kid up to slaughter. Let him get a little bit better. What's the guy from, and then from he Baltimore? Nah, what's nah. the guy from Baltimore? Who? Uh, uh, that used to fight at 154. He lost. He was a weight bully too. Ah, uh, shit, I can't remember his name. He's from Baltimore. He was I'm thinking, I'm in Baltimore he, with you. Hold he, on, come on, champ. Come on, host. We, we supposed to know this, host. Oh, you talking about Jared Hurd? Oh! Hurd. I wanted them two to fight when they was at 154, because they, they both was weight bully. Two big motherfuckers. And so is Virgil Ortiz, too. He's a weight bully at a 147. Who, Ortiz? Yeah, he was a weight bully at a 147. <laughs> oh, there'd be a lot of weight bullies. <laughs> but if you can, my thing is, if you can make the weight, when they weigh in, you made the weight. I, I don't yeah. boxing that you go by the yeah, way. Virgil he canceled fighting. two fights in a row. See, the difference team. was when I was fighting, you weigh in the day of the fight. Yeah, See, that's right. It. And that's right. The day before, which I was like, that's bull crap. Yeah, that's the, the way they doing it now, man, is crazy. Press conference week out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the face off. Yeah. Then the weigh in come. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah when they started changing the rules, man. Yeah, I was like, wow. See, we had we had different rules when you was talking about no headgear and headgear. When I first started fighting, amateur was no headgear. It changed yeah, about a, it changed about right, a, sure I'm gonna say two years into me um, fighting amateur, and then they said you gotta wear headgear, and then it went. What you no did that? I'm a '60s, but what year they did that? They made was, you start wearing headgear. It was in the '80s, the late. Yeah. 80s. Okay, late '80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, KJ. Because I, I went to a couple of my brother fights and he had no headgear on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you go look oh, yeah, they had no headgear head back guys, then. Uh, no, 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 ask y'all this question, head somebody can answer this one. Who is Tank? Who's Javante Davis calling out? No, he's not calling out nobody. Somebody, he's not calling out nobody right now. Nobody. Uh, I, I thought, I thought they said he had a fight this year. He got to fight somebody. He got, he got to have a fight this year. Yeah. Well, who you yeah, think he's looking at? You think he's looking at Haney? You think nah, he's gonna fight Ryo? Nah, nah. nah. I, don't think so. I think he don't want to go to 140. He that Barrios fight kind of fucked him up with the 140. Like, yeah. I don't think he could deal with it. Like, he knocked him out and everything, but I think he, he felt like small. I was, I'm not mad yeah, at him for not going to go to 140. Like he's not a, he's not a large guy. The reason why he could he could potentially go to 140 is because he's so athletic and he got yeah. so much power, but really he is a small guy. But but this is the thing though. Pernell Whitaker did it. So it's like, 
Tank got to do it for real, for real. If he really um, want to be yeah, the yeah. man. But you got to remember, Purnell didn't rely on power, so he could yeah, outbox. Yeah, he sure did. Purnell outbox. Yeah. He yeah. could outbox anybody, no matter how big you are. Mm -hmm. But Javante Davis, even though he's a decent boxer puncher, I don't think he outbox anybody. He can't just outbox somebody. Right. <laughs> Right. Power. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and think about him at 147. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that'll work out for him. Yeah. I hope it do because I like the kid. So wherever he go, I look for him to win. I like Javante Davis, man. I don't care yeah. who be hating on him. So my, oh, he ain't fight nobody. Like, well, who y'all want him to fight? King Kong? He fought. I mean, <laughs> I mean, all right. It's a business too, man. But he do need to fight. He need to throw a couple of people. He need Haney. He need all he got ever all, all Tank got to do at this point is fight uh the Haney or Tio or Shakur. Yeah. It don't matter which one. That's it and beat him. That's it. Yeah, I would like to see him fight Shakur, but I want Shakur to come to fight. And they're speaking yeah. of, of a Shakur, him yeah. and Jordan Shakur are having a beef. Is Shakur going to need to study Penel Whitaker and sit on his punches? That's what I'm gonna keep saying. Yeah. But I mean, be fair. If he don't come to fight, if he come to if Chikor come to pit a patter and run backwards all day, see, you can fight backwards if you're aggressive, if you're doing what you got to do. Sugar Ray Robinson fought backwards. But when he yeah. hit you, it was you, you knew he hit your head. So if you want, I, I just don't like the way um, uh, um, Chikor fight. I just don't. I think, Shakur, I think Shakur was going through his pouting stages, yeah. right, in the fight, after the fight. You don't have confidence uh, in him. Just pouting, just pouting, yeah. acting like a little child, yeah, was, you know, because he, he can't have real, his way. Though. He said he had an off he night. Was pout, he was pouting in the locker room. He pouted when he came out through the walk. He was just in a pouting yeah. mood that night. And then after a week, then all his retirement, I think the deal wasn't going to his specifications. He got one more fight to do, and I think he's going to really move on into better things. But you, but you, do, understand, sure. you but, do understand he's still a kid. Right, exactly. <laughs> Y'all you know, take these boxes. I don't know how old you guys are. I'm 62. I'm 16, oh, bro. Yeah. I'm 16. You got to understand, these are still young people. So, yeah. you know, I, I, but, but we got a team, and a team and your PR people keep you where you need to be structurally. So, you know, him being a kid and outbursting like that on national platform, it didn't make him look good after that fight. No, a lot of things don't make me so. But you know, I, I just don't so like. So this is a man's world. He better grow up real quick and realize what's up. He got to grow up then. And he have potential. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got to assert himself. Uh, right, you go, you, you people are paying to see you fight, man. Huh? Uh, the core got to get a more aggressive style. Yeah. I think, in order to please the fans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and get a fight here. My phone on less than ten percent. Uh, Kevin, you joined in late. I'm sorry. Brother. All right, I know, guys. I know, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Next time. I love y'all, man. Peace, man. Peace, man. You'll be safe, yeah. man. You too. Don't All right, peace, peace, peace brother. Y'all be safe. Good night. All right, be cool, y'all.